It's our first ever sponsored episode, but don't worry. We're going to keep it super duper cool and super duper lightweight. Your journey back from the plane of air is instantaneous with assurances from Nitten that she'll be able to hold the integrity of Arakok till you get the sunstone from Murloc Gnomes and Castle Darkmoor. She opens a portal for you and you step right into the main room of your bar. What's strange is that you find it abandoned. The staff you hired are all there milling about and glumly wiping glasses, but there is not a single customer in the building. What's the fucking meaning of this? Is there like a pandemic or something? <laughs> <laughs> There's an orc who's sort of half-heartedly sweeping and he says, Oh, hey boss. Yeah, um, everyone stopped coming here since Um and Um Brewing opened up just down the street. Oh, what's Um and Um Brewing? I'm glad you asked, Dave the Dragonborn. Um and Um Brewing is California's first and only cooperatively owned brewery with just over 650 lifetime members. They currently have 14 beers in their catalog, available seasonally and on rotation, covering a wide variety of beard styles. Nice. And anyone in California can become a lifetime member slash owner for $150, either as a single payment or three payments of 50 bucks. I'm probably going to do that. Membership gets you wholesale pricing on beer, special events including cake tappings and barbecues, plus discounts on merchandise like t-shirts, pint glasses, keychains, and more. You know a lot of details about that. Oh, fuck those guys. We're going to go over there right now and we're going to murder them. Before you can say that, Blade bursts in the door. He's wearing an um and um t-shirt, by the way, and says, guys, guys, what are you waiting? Gary heard you were back and he's already setting up for his new thing. Is he the brewery? He better be the brewery. You take that off right now, you stupid, stupid. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> You chase Blade down through the sewers and (laughs) once again find yourself outside of Gary's hut, which at this point is back to its normal state as a wooden hut. However, the sign outside has once again been scratched out and now it says Gary's Armory, sponsored by Um Amanum Brewing. Well, that's remarkably, that's refreshingly normal. Uh, What did we buy here last time? (laughs) What did he switch from? Wasn't it a church? I it was a mega church. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, he was a mega church, and then before that, he was a casino at one point, wasn't he? Something like that. Mm-hmm. It's a tattoo parlor. I wish. Yeah, I liked that casino. I'd go back there. Okay, but like armory, that just that's you know, we could use that. Aye. As you enter, the shelves of knickknacks, casino gear, and all of Gary's other interests are once again gone and have been replaced with shining shields, coats, and suits of armor mystical looking cloaks that shine with magic however gary himself looks rather odd aside from the um and um brewing t-shirt that he's wearing he has stuck feathers all over his body and comes to the door to greet you that's offensive <laughs> <laughs> eric cock black bird face <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey hey, hey Claw, look i'm an armor cocra <laughs> armor cocra wow Oh dear. All right, that's pretty clever, though. That's kind of worth it. I'm going to avoid his gaze. Claw! Claw! Looking away. Claw! Claw! Hanging out front, Claw. smoking a cigarette. Look at me! He wants you to look at him. <laughs> Claw! Claw! <laughs> Claw! I'm only on every like seven months. Claw! Don't do this to me. <laughs> Gary's short, right? Oh, yeah. I'm like a pile of dirt, pretty much. I look over, at, I look over him and kind of survey the armor. <laughs> All right. Well, here, you guys take a look at the menu. And he throws you his usual menu. Now, some of this was created by me. Some of this was created by strangers that I found on the internet. And some of this was created by our dungeon master level patrons who have the privilege, nay, the honor of both sponsoring the show and creating items and characters that go in it. Oh, oh. So who wants to go first? Oh, oh, I, I want, I like this one. This one right here. Oh, God. All right, Dave, what'll it be? 
okay, feels like a lot of people sigh whenever I do something. All right. So I would like the armor of deflection, please. The armor of deflection. Dave, read that description for the audience at home. So I'm reading that this suit of armor provides plus one to AC and once per day, I may activate it to attempt to deflect the consequences of my actions somewhere else. If the wearer rolls, that's me. If I roll higher than 10 on a D20, said consequences are deflected to one random living creature in the area. Oh, fuck (laughs) you. (laughs) Fuck you. If I roll a 10 or lower, the consequences are doubled. The definition of consequences are doubled is up to the dungeon master. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, he hands you this shining suit of armor. It has a Fox News host on it, just pointing out out of the very mirrory <laughs> surface. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to end in you t- being turned into two falcons. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> I have a chair. All right, who's next? Who's next? I'll go next. Mm-hmm. I wish to, I was looking for armor of flexion. I don't want to be the random <laughs> creature in the area for him. But I will go with the plot armor. Ooh, Ooh. read that description for Excellent us. Excellent pick. All right, this armor contains your current AC. However, you cannot die while wearing it unless that would be more dramatically satisfying. Further, since grievous wounds are far more dramatic, you take double damage while wearing it. If knocked out while wearing it, instead of making death throws, you are forced to mumble an incomplete series of last words until healed, (laughs) unless your speech is good enough, in which case you will actually die. All right. (laughs) so all good. I was really close on another one, and I believe that was a patron created one. But yeah, I, that, that I have to land on that one. Absolutely, that was a patron creation. Whoever did that, fantastic. No, no, I don't think so. But oh, that was an Eli. The that other was one that I almost used. Oh, gotcha. I literally almost said that was Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it's going great over here. <laughs> it's mean. better if you disassociate. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm very disappointed, Heath, that you didn't pick the bean gauntlets, but we'll get to that. Yep, there's the bean gauntlets. The oh, gauntlets there was of- something with like a bean. I, I could force a bean table to exist, and I did consider that heavily. Yep, that was patron Meg M. Excellent, excellent creation. Mm-hmm. All right, who's next? Do you have any like Adidas shoes? Uh, no, Adidas. Or Asics? Or uh, anything running wise? <laughs> Maybe something off-brand. Converse. Oh, Converse high tops. Yeah, do you have Converse high tops? No, I don't have those, but what about these? And he pulls out Reeboks. Reeboks, shoes for birds. A uh, box. Yep. Nice. <laughs> By Dungeon Master patron Corgi <laughs> Buttwiggles. Read that description for us, Morgan. These black and red runners will turn heads when you're turning it up on the court. The high top. Oh, they are high tops. Okay, I'm okay then. Okay. The high top has a pump for the most comfort possible. You'll feel like the cock of the walk in these wearer, and then it has my given name, which I refuse to use, if he chooses, <laughs> receives a confidence boost while wearing their shoes and rolls plus two on charisma rolls. Sorry, were, were you worried about the ankle support on those until you were assured that they're high tops? <laughs> with the bird legs, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we, birds have ankles? That's my, that was my next question. Do you have ankles? <laughs> Honestly, any episode where we don't go over the cloaca situation is yeah. a good episode. So yeah, <laughs> let's let's batten down and Google it. All right, and Bridget, you were up last. Oh, I am so torn. Can somebody help me? Because two of my favorites are still here. Is one of them Eric's Armor of Glue? Because that's the one that I really wanted. The other one that I really wanted. <laughs> no, one of them's the Holy Water. Oh, that's good. And the other one is the Ambulance. Oh, yeah. okay. Read the Ambulance. This is by patron Gina V. Thank you, Gina. When the Ambulance successfully strikes an enemy, the amount of damage is doubled and converted to HP for a predetermined ally. A nat 20 makes the ally invulnerable for the duration, and a critical failure role renders the ally unconscious. That's powerful as fuck. Mm -hmm. Wait, what was the other one? The other one was Holy Water by When Wood Duck Ducked the Wooden Duck It Decked Gray Duck's Gray Wooden Deck. Nice. (laughs) At Atomic Penguin 7 on Twitter. (laughs) You know what? We're going to call you Atomic Penguin 7. That's included in the patron name. We're not going to call him WWDDTWD. 
I D G D. No, keep going. G-W-D. Yeah, no. W-D. It's like an acronym on a Florida law right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wear it as a waistcoat instead of a bracelet. <laughs> Um, liquid armor presented as a vial. This armor is powered by your imagination exclamation point. You pour it over (laughs) yourself and get a plus AC bonus equal to your charisma modifier for five rounds of combat. It has one charge per day and you can use that a charge to grant a use of the shield spell. What? You can do the shield spell instead. The spell spell that is called shield. The spell. The spell. The sealed seal spell. All my anti Semitic characters I wasn't allowed to do in the last arc right. here. <laughs> sure, you can imagine you have more charges, but the that effect is imaginary and doesn't apply. Yeah. I mean, one would be great for boss battles. Mm-hmm. One would be great for for healing. What's your charisma modifier? That's a good question. I didn't look at that. Uh, zero. So you know what? Why don't I go with the ambulance? (laughs) (laughs) The ambulance it is. I was confusing wisdom with with charisma. I hear you can just imagine yourself being highly charismatic. I hear that's a thing some people do (laughs) and it works for them. I believe it. I believe that you believe that. Mm -hmm. I'm mathematically plus four. (laughs) Dave sadly (laughs) puts the hypnosis self tape back in his pocket. (laughs) I'm very charismatic. (laughs) Fuck you. Charisma. Hey, everybody, just dropping in to thank you so much for listening to the show. In case you couldn't pick it up, I know it was super subtle, but this episode is sponsored. Our first ever sponsor, Amanum Brewing. You've heard about them a little bit and you will continue to hear about them throughout the episode but I think you I think you guessed that by now but check them out especially if you're out their way and you want to become a lifetime member and be all the cool events and stuff and at the very least you should reward them because they're supporting a podcast you like I don't know if that's audible or if Morgan will be able to do anything with that. But either way, big thanks to Amanam for supporting the show, our first ever sponsor, and depending on the feedback, probably our last ever sponsor. All right. Thank you all so much for listening to the show. We are loving doing this thing. I know what you're thinking to yourself. Hey, Eli, this episode is so short, like lame, man. I want my I want my fix of D&D minus. Well, I've got good news at the almost exact same time as this is dropping. I've dropped a brand new Dungeon Master's Corner. That's a little AMA that I do for our patrons. So they've got a whole other thing to listen to this month. Me answering questions about the show and what it's like behind the scenes. And you could have access to that for just a little bit of money. Just head on over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus financially support the show. You can get access to that. Our short game we played all sorts of fun behind the scenes stuff. And as you heard in this episode and other episodes in the show, if you become a dungeon master level patron, you actually get to contribute things to the show magical items and characters and PCs and all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, you'll get a chance to do that by supporting us over at Patreon. But hey, if you don't have the money, that's okay. Not everyone can support us financially. Why not drop us a review over on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts? Say nice things about the show. It helps promote the show. We're in consistently in the top like 100 or so D&D shows because of our category, because of the lovely folks like you that do reviews for us. So thank you to everyone who's done that. And if you haven't done it yet, jump on. Takes just a couple seconds. All right. One more time. A big thanks to Um Amanum Brewing for sponsoring the episode. And we will see you all next month. Let's get back to the show. Dave, Gladys doesn't even wait until you're in your room to appear to you. As you head to the bathroom on the way back from Gary's, she appears in the mirror and she's wearing an um and um brewing button on her usual outfit. And she says, <laughs> you let him escape to Duckmore Manor. Ow. OK, I'm in the bathroom. That's that's very upsetting. Ow. Uh, OK, yeah. Gladys, what? I didn't even hear what you said. What did you say? One. Um, Why um, did you say <laughs> ow when you tried to use the bathroom? Yeah. Just now? <laughs> I was scared by you. It was mentally, ouch. I'm trying to take a shit and you're scary. Oh, it was one of those like goes back up in because of the fear thing. <laughs> yes, it was. It was one of those. Yes, it is. Or and it now I have that thing out more of violently. trying to deal with that. And that's something in my life 
I don't want to hear your excuses, kid. The Darkmoors, if you haven't noticed, have been trying to kill you since our little incident back home. So, needless to say, you won't be welcome within miles of the place. So, wait, my family's trying to kill me? Yeah, they've been trying to kill you through like literally the entire podcast. Who tried to kill me? Oh, so there was like the guy in the warehouse who was very clearly looking for you. And then there was the assassin who Carl killed. That was a big one. I felt like the warehouse kind of got passed over. Do you listen to the podcast, Dave? Like while we're recording it? What? Do you listen to the podcast when you're on it? (laughs) (laughs) Do you ever listen to to us when we speak? What? He's pooping. (laughs) Anyways, I know I'm going to regret giving you this, kid, but here. And she hands you a plain wooden mask. That is the mask of many faces, kid. I imbued it with the spell Disguise Self. And you can use it. Oh, you lucky bastard. As often as you like to keep your true identity a secret. Nice. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Gladys. There's one more thing. It seems the Darkmoors have made a new deal with someone to get their powers back. And I'll admit I'm none too happy about it. So, kid, while you're there getting the sun bone or whatever it is, I'd be grateful if you can figure out who their new patron is, and I'll throw in a big fat Christmas bonus if you can fuck that relationship up. So let me ask you, kid. Do you think you can manage to fuck up a relationship? You're, you're, you're asking me if I can fuck up a relationship <laughs> and I get a prize for it? That's right. Gladys. Gladys. We're going to make out right now, right? Have you talked to Carl? <laughs> We're going to make out while I'm shitting. This is a thing. <laughs> Claw, you take some time to check in with Alex and the Brotherhood of the Shadow. Before you leave, he takes you aside to impart some of the Brotherhood's wisdom and power. Claw, between your small talk, your shower thoughts, your sports jersey, you are now so boring that you barely exist. However, there is yet another threshold you must cross in order to cease mattering in every conceivable way. You must... Be not that into politics. (laughs) So like into Canadian politics, essentially, right? Yeah. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. You follow him down a hallway of minion memes that are like folk or just folk or like everyone's blue in the dark. (laughs) He says, Claw, when someone asks you about the issues of the day, be it social, political, or even your vaguest opinion on a TV show, you must learn to answer, I don't know. I'm not that into politics. This will give you two great benefits. <laughs> First, you will have stillness of mind. I'm so happy about this one. <laughs> for when one becomes apolitical, you can be neither passionate nor afraid. <laughs> so you now have stillness of mind. Starting at seventh level, you can use your action to end one effect on yourself <laughs> that is causing you to be charmed or frightened. Cool. Can I use the Canadian politics line instead of the I'm in, not into politics yep, line? Yep, you say that. Okay. But more importantly, Claw, you can now use your lack of caring about anything to save yourself from harm. This is a skill called evasion. When you find yourself in harm's way, simply mumble something about how people are just people or what the world needs now is love <laughs> and danger will pass over you. Because as everyone knows, if you pretend another person's problem isn't a big deal, it can't possibly hurt you. <laughs> And you now have evasion. Cool. At seventh level, and I think you're going to like this, Morgan. At seventh level, your instinctive agility lets you dodge out of the way of certain area effects, such as a blue dragon's lightning breath or, and this is in the description, a fireball spell. (laughs) When you are subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw to only take half damage, you instead take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw and only half damage if you fail. Nice. Ooh. Cool. Exactly. A lot of fireballs about to be thrown. <laughs> That's excellent. Snedrick, you continue to study your magic, but at this point, you know most of the Poth library by heart. So 
you're barely a lazy afternoon into your studies when you're asleep and once again find yourself in a vision. Except this one is strange. It flits back and forth between different paths as though the future is less certain. In one, you see yourself charming a dragonborn prince. In another, you crawl through rafters. The possibilities seem endless and flit faster and faster through your mind until they solidify into one real definite image. A vat of green goo bubbles in front of you in a darkened room. A figure rises from it, screaming, but you can't see it. Only its shadow, huge and menacing against the wall before you, with one very strange characteristic. This figure, whatever it is, has two heads. Well, I don't get no superpowers or nothing? No. <laughs> God damn it. What you get for being a wizard, man? You think you get more superpowers? Yeah, right? You would think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Blade gathers you all before you leave for Castle Darkmoor and says, What? I don't get one? That's what you get for being a cleric. Ah, uh, wait. But I want to go over to that new brewery and yeah, beat right? the hell out of them. All right. Well, if anyone would like to see how that fight against the Amanon Blurry goes, <laughs> you can check out the Gimme Dilute podcast YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> where we have the non-canonical answer to just how that battle goes. We totally won. <laughs> we totally won. I don't shoot myself at a brewery <laughs> at the very end. Exactly. If only I'd had evasion then. Non-canonical. Blade gathers you all before you leave for Castle Darkmoor and says, listen, as you may have guessed by now, you're headed into very, very hostile territory. No, I wouldn't have guessed that because normally you'd get like some kind of new superpower or something if that was the case. <laughs> I know, right? You'd think you would get it. Take it up with Gary Gygax. Or like whoever made fifth edition. I don't know who yeah, that right, guy is. Yeah. <laughs> you should take up like grid paper with Gary Gygax. <laughs> <laughs> now, as far as we know, the only folks we've got on the ground there are Dave's foster parents. So you're going to want to stop there first. But if the Darkmoors get word that you're in town, they're going to come down on you hard. Plus, Murloc's there, and he will have told them just who and what to be looking for in the rest of you. I guess what I'm saying is, if you're going to get the Sunstone back, you're going to have to steal it from one of the most heavily guarded castles in the world. Not a problem. I got a mess. I feel like it's going to be a problem. Oy. I've been so successful so far. In yeah, no, you have. You really have. <laughs> I did it out of the park. Hey, hey, Blade, you have, your voice is just like this pug of pegacorn I know. It's so funny. <laughs> well, uh, can I, can I summon Carl the pug pegacorn? Because I just want you to hear it. I want you to hear feel it. feel like we already did this bit. feel like we already made, compared me what, to Carl. What bit? What, what, I don't even know what that means. We're very different. And Carl appears in a mirror. Like next to him, and he's like, yeah, what are you talking about? We sound totally different. Do you guys? Wow. Why don't you each say a couple sentences? You so Italian-Americans all sound the same. That, well, Where's America? What's what's an American mean? America. Fantasy Italian, fantasy American. It's, <laughs> ah, okay. it's established. I get it. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is favorite place. <laughs> <laughs> and as he finishes saying that, a drawer in the seven-drawer chest pops open with a click. Inside is a note wrapped around a vial of green goo. Ooh. And that note says, sometimes you need to split the party. Uh-oh. Wait, I don't even get a vision. No, what you you people don't always get something every time you come back. <laughs> I this feel like we sucks. Us this people. Is so stupid. Wow. <laughs>
for <laughs> racism. Fucking Irish people. And God, <laughs> always want something. Fair enough, though. <laughs> I'm not Irish. I'm fantasy dwarven. I'm dwarven. You're also Scottish. Yeah, you're Scottish. I am Scottish. fantasy <laughs> Scottish. Thank you very much. How dare you? I'm an Irish dragon. You're all dead to me. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.